Welcome to The Life of Hair. My name's James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. Now, this week's episode is gonna be about full head highlight technique, taking someone that was previously a scalp bleach and gently working them to something that's softer in the root and easier to maintain. My client here is Tiger. She's a social media influencer. She has her own clothing brand. She's super busy now, and she doesn't necessarily have the time to upkeep scalp bleach every four weeks. So she wanted to go a little bit softer. I started this process over a year ago with her and I haven't really done her hair in between then. She's been very busy and she's had her hair done in other salons since then. But now she's back and she wants to take the blonde to the next level. She wants that seamless root effect into what is existingly very, very blonde hair. She doesn't want to lose the fact that she's got very, very blonde hair so we won't be adding low lights or anything like that. So if you think that might happen at the end of the video, then don't be disappointed. I know some of you do reach out to me and say, oh, why didn't you put a low light in? I'm not a huge fan of low lighting techniques. I feel they look dingy and murky after a while. So you won't see many low lighting techniques from me unless it's one to break up a previous color through the means of a, probably a root stretch into a low lighting technique. So I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do and you take something from it, share it with your friends, hit the thumbs up button. That helps the videos get to a wider audience, and it's really important to help me grow the channel so I can bring you more free content to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe. It really, really means the world to me. For all of you that have subscribed, 80% of the people that watch my channel haven't subscribed yet, so it'd be wonderful if a few more of you would click that subscribe button to help the channel grow in the algorithm rankings. And don't forget, chat to me down in the comments because I love that conversation about your thoughts on the technique and anything else you'd love to see on the channel. First thing we're going to do is look at what we're dealing with here. On Tiger's hair, we have got a lot of regrowth, as you can see, and then a band of colour from her previous highlighting session where they tried to diffuse the colour into the existing blonde hair. So I'm going to show you exactly how to manage this in a one-step process using highlights. It is a very, very simple technique to use. We're going to section off from just behind the highest point of the head to the back of the ear, through the middle of the occipital bone, and then to the top of the ear and section that off into four sections. Starting in the back, we're going to take a horizontal section. We're going to work with a regular weave here, trying to get air on the finer side of a regular weave just to ensure we get seamless blending. I'm using a clay-based bleach that is not a balayage bleach, but is called Redkin Powerlift and 20 volume with a pH bonder or bonder additive inside. This means that I can happily paint through the previous band and create a better blend between the existing natural color and the very, very blonde ends that exist. One of the problems with the previous color, the lift was not light enough. So that is why you, it looked like there was such a contrast between the two. So it is really important that I make the effort to relift the areas that were previously lifted. Some of you ask about my foiling technique and it's a really, really simple thing to do. Place the foil up in the air, the pintail comb at the bottom of the foil, fold the foil around the pintail comb, and then place it into the section that you've just weaved away. Apply your product, fold it by thirds, push up the back flat and fold the edges in. Super simple, super easy and mega secure. Anyone out there who struggles with their foil slipping, I highly recommend you try this technique. In terms of product application, I'm careful when I apply the products close to the roots and always apply the products as close as I possibly can. I don't leave a gap between the, the lip of the foil and my client's scalp because of the technique that I use to fold my foils with. As we work our way up the head, we're going to continue with exactly the same thing. You will note that I am weaving around one to three centimeters away from the scalp area. This gives me a slightly more irregular depth to the weave, and I personally prefer this type of weave pattern. I think that this creates a more natural looking highlight as we go through. Tell me what you think down in the comments to your own personal weave techniques and styles. I really do love to see what people come up with. We're keeping the sections about five millimeters in spacing 
due to the fact we've got so much hair that is uncolored at the roots and we have that band to deal with. Saturating the hair well as you work through is so important. Even saturation and plenty of saturation will be the key to whether your, your color lifts successfully or not. I cannot stress to you how important saturation of product is. And if you're not sure what I mean by saturation, that is the amount of product you get on the hair that is in the foil. Good saturation will be the difference between a clean lift and something that you see struggling to lift over a long period of time. As we move up to the top of the head, a lot of you ask about this area and how to deal with it. I will end up with a small triangle of hair in just a second, and I will foil all the way through that section in this particular instance. I don't always do this. Sometimes I leave a triangle of hair at the top in the crown and I just foil through it horizontally, as you may have seen in my previous videos. I've got a slight overlapping of product here and it's a great way to deal with it. Just simply lift up the back of the foil, wipe the product away with the tail comb and seal the foil down as you saw me use my fingers to do there. The flap at the back ensures that no product will seep out of that seal now and it is incredibly useful to have. I know some of you will think you don't want to deal with this tiny little bit of hair at the top here and it is a bit pointless to work on this angle and end up with this tiny little triangle. But trust me, it isn't worthless and this is one of the areas on the head your clients will see or their friends will see while they're walking behind them. It is very important to pay very close detail to the crown section. Working through the sides and the top, I'm going to be working on a diagonal section. Diagonals always create soft shapes. So using a diagonal in this instance is really, really important. We're gonna take very fine weaves and we're gonna take five millimeter spacings in between each section. However, on these first two sections, I'm going to be taking a two millimeter spacing just to keep it a little bit brighter around Tiger's hairline. In these side sections, I'm still using 20 volume with exactly the same bleach I started with, the Redkin Powerlift bleach. When I move on to the sections further up the head, on the top of the head, I will change my peroxide to 30 volume. This is to allow the top to develop at a similar speed to the sides. I will rinse the back before I rinse the sides and the top. Because the sides and the back are separated in the way that they are, this means that I can wash the back out and it will not disturb the front of the color that I've just done. I think washing the bleach off the back of the head as you work is very important. Now I wouldn't do it as I'm doing the foils in the front because I'm fast at foiling. But once that product on the back has had its maximum development time or it has reached the level of lightness that I want, I will remove it. It is very important for the condition of the hair that we do not overprocess it just because we can't be bothered to remove it. I feel it's very important to remove the color as we go. I know some people out there don't think it's necessary, but I think from a condition standpoint, it is very necessary to remove the foils that are fully processed as we move through the technique. If it has taken you two hours to apply a full head and that first foil went in two hours ago, that is a much longer time than the manufacturer recommended you leave it on and you will indefinitely have created damage on that hair. It is really important to keep your sections clean and tidy as you work through this technique. The cleaner and the more even we take the sections, the better the end result. The eye is naturally drawn to indiscrepancies, blobs, and anything untoward that you may have created. So work with even clean sections as you go. This first section on the hairline is mirroring the hairline as you can see. We're taking a very fine section and then weaving that section. Everything that you do around the hairline is amplified. So make sure that your sections are fine and beautiful. Do not take chunky sections 
and make sure that your first section is absolutely bang on the hairline. This will mean that your client won't see dark hair when they pull their hair back. The next section is exactly like the previous section, take a two millimeter spacing. We'll then convert to our five millimeter spacings as we work through the technique. Taking diagonal sections and re retaining that diagonal all the way through the technique is super important for softness. I highly recommend if you've never used diagonal sections like this, that you give it a go you will be very surprised at how beautiful and blended the results will be. So some things to remember, if you're using a diagonal section, try and retain in a diagonal all the way through the section. Ending up horizontal or vertical is not ideal in this instance, and it will not keep the softness of the technique that you're trying to achieve. Checking before you remove the color is super important. The amount of times I've worked with people who have said, oh yeah, it's been on ages, take it off, or just assumed that they'd got the levels of lift that they required. I appreciate you don't want to leave it too much over manufacturer's recommended guidelines, but if five more minutes makes the difference between a perfect color and manufacturer's guidelines, I would say go with the five more minutes. It certainly won't hurt the hair's condition, but it might make all the difference to the results that you get. I'm perfectly satisfied with the lift that I've got at this point, and I'm going to remove the back before I then move on to the front sections. Scraping off the product like that will be a good way of seeing exactly what lift we have got. Now onto the toner. First things first, roots. Apply the roots down to the previous color. Now, the color that was done before, as I said, was like a warmer color in the mid zone there, and it didn't quite have enough lift on it. You get those orangey results when the color hasn't been left on long enough and you need it to be a little bit lighter. So what I'm gonna do is paint my roots on a level nine, Redkin Shades EQ, and then I'm going to drag that level nine over that orangey band. And then going to take that, and then going to apply a level 10 Shades EQ with some clear processing solution over the ends and let it process. The level 10 is a 10N color, just a natural neutral because it is so light, anything else will give me a reflect. Violet, titanium, any of those colors you will see because the ends are so clean. I love a natural for when I want a really clean blonde over something that has been really, really cleanly lifted. Make sure you comb the product through. As I said, it's to get the product over that really, really warm area. It's gonna make all the difference when it comes to processing it and the finished result. Once I've done this, the level 10 color will overlap the warm band in the middle. Once the roots are applied, as I said, I'm going to apply my ends by just simply overlapping the previous color and applying it all the way through. This is a super quick and easy way of doing a root stretch effectively, but because the contrast of the colors is very low, I've got a nine on the roots and a 10 with clear on the ends to make it a level 11, I then just get a seamless blend without too much effort. And here we have the finished result, a super, super blended root area into that ice white platinum ends that she had before. I really like the result now, and Tiger's super pleased with the result too. And it means that she can continue growing out her roots without needing that regular maintenance of those really high maintenance scalp bleaches. Check out Tiger's Instagram in the description below. If you've enjoyed this episode, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again really, really soon for another episode of The Life of Hair.